Hey everyone, we're going to get right into chapter 9 here. Chapter 9 is covering environmental health. In regards to environmental health, what we're looking at is think of all the risks um, from the moment you wake up, even I guess while you're sleeping, just throughout the day that you're exposed to. You can have risks in your home, in your neighborhood, at your school, and even the sun itself going outside poses these risks, which we uh, categorize under environmental health. And we're going to look specifically at those this chapter. But this lecture is just kind of a little bit of an overview to get you, give you an idea of what we're going to be talking about these next few sections. So first off, let's talk about the types of environmental health hazards. Um, there's four of them that we're going to, again, get into a little more specifics later. But think first one is biological. So a virus, a bacteria, something that makes you sick or causes disease, we just call, call that a pathogen. And we've all had the flu or a cold and we've all been exposed to a certain pathogens. Again, a perfect example of a biological health ha hazard. Even some of our lifestyle choices. So think, some people choose to smoke, some people choose to drink in excess. All these lifestyle choices are also posing hazards to your health. Chemical, um, especially disinfectants. Some of these are, man. most of these are man-made, some are found naturally in the environment, but Think about disinfectants under your sink. You know, you go to clean your bathroom. Those chemicals do have an effect when you breathe them in or they're exposed on your skin. And finally, we're going to have our physical, which is our, just our natural disasters. Think of an earthquake, a landslide, um, a volcano. These are just natural things that happen that, again, are could negatively affect us. So someone looking at those is the study is epidemiology and with epidemiology what's going on is we're just we're trying to study this disease within the human population where did it come from how does it spread how can we control it and a perfect example is think of every year around end of fall beginning of winter they tell you to get your flu shot that's a perfect example of under uh, epidemiology so and what we they also want to do is not just the flu but they, they're going to study large groups and remember the benefit the larger your group the more data you can gather and the more data you have the better decisions you can make and again how to control a certain virus that's uh, exposed to the human population and as I said so looking at the hazards what are the hazards what are the effects and how can we eliminate them Moving on to toxicology. So toxic, I'm assuming we all know what that word means. So toxicology, what we're doing is how poisonous is this? You know, how bad is it for me? There's some things if you're exposed to just once, unfortunately, it could kill you. Or you're going to see there's other things where over time you're exposed to certain amounts of radiation. Over time, that builds up and causes uh, negative health effects as well. So again, we're just measuring the har how harmful it is. And taking a look at the graph on the left that's what we mean when we talk about the dose response dose response is how much and how long again how long do i have to be exposed to something until i get sick and as i mentioned at the beginning of the slide some things right away some things it takes lots and lots of time we also have to look at the individual there's lots of differences among us some people are well can it be exposed to the flu virus and not get sick some people get sick right away some people have horrible symptoms some people just have the sniffles so individual response is huge and especially when we talk about disease like uh, pathogens you know you hear the infants and the elderly are usually the ones that are most affected one infants that haven't built up their immune system their organs are still developing um, they're not their body can't fight it off as well as a healthy adult. And the same as an elderly person, their immune systems are sometimes compromised and they seem, tend to get sick more often as well. And then even think of we're a fetus, a fetus in a mother's womb. Here we have this developing fetus. If you expose it to drugs, alcohol, secondhand smoke, that could have negative effects as well. It is important to point out some diseases have genetic effects. There's some things you just cannot do. It's in your genes. There's a mutation in your gene, let's say for breast cancer. You know, that's just what you were dealt when you, with your genes. Um, something very important to point out, though, is some, most of the times these go hand in hand. I use the example of breast cancer, but you, um, yes, it could be a genetic mutation, but it could be an environmental factor 
you've been exposed to radiation as well. So it's not just one thing most of the time. So what scientists will do though is they'll look at take a risk assess assessment. And when you assess the situation, you're looking at what's going on, how risky is it? So if you were to look at this chart right now, the likelihood of you getting struck by lightning is not very good, whereas you can see 271 people out of every 100,000 people develop heart, dis heart disease. So we would say you're at a higher risk of heart disease or you're at a higher risk of getting a motor vehicle, dying in a motor vehicle accident than getting hit by a train. So risk, remember, we're the probability that the hazard is going to cause harm and the assessment is we're measuring. So the two things we're taking into account, though, is the type of hazard and how frequently are exposed to it. And what this does, it does again is it helps scientists make decisions about which hazards are harmful, which ones to focus on, and just which ones you're just going to have to live with. Uh, so that'll do it. That's just an intro to Chapter 9. Um, if you have any questions, you can always come see me. See ya.